This is Here's How, Ireland's political, social and current affairs podcast, presented by William Campbell. Thank you for downloading episode 103 of Here's How for the 28th of April 2020. It's months since the election and we still don't have a new government. In this podcast, I take a look at how some potential coalition partners could get on. Here's How is Ireland's political, social and current affairs podcast. Make your view heard. Just dial 076 603 5060 and tell the world what you're thinking. Your voicemail may be included in the next podcast. You can find tips on recording your contribution and other ways to contact the show at hereshow.ie slash call. In a few minutes we'll have this. Robin is essentially correct to say that you have to have a target of eliminating X number of vehicles in order for all of those initiatives to have a focus to actually get something done. And it's a really simple question. What what would that target be? There are are the targets in terms of being, you know, the report of the all party, uh, the all party group that that, that reported on climate change. And there are a number of targets there uh, that are around, uh, around vehicles. That's coming up shortly, but first I want to thank all of my donors on Patreon, especially Peter, who signed up as a patron since the last podcast. I really appreciate everyone who does that. If you don't know, Patreon is a website that allows people to donate a dollar or two per podcast or per month, and that helps me to devote more time to research and finding interesting guests. You can think of it as a karmic balance for paying or not paying your €160 to RTE for your TV licence. If you think that you could do the same as Peter and the other donors, there's details on the website and at the end of the show. Right now, there is what might be a courtship dance going on between Fine Gael and Fianna Fáil on one side and the Green Party on the other, as to whether the Green Party will join a three-party coalition to form a government. I spoke to some senior Green Party sources at the time of the election, and they said that to join any coalition, they would want to be both wanted and needed in that coalition. What that meant, they explained, was two things. Wanted meant that the other parties had to be at least amenable to policies that they wanted to pursue. Clearly all parties have different policies, but if they were only there for making up the numbers and there was no meeting of minds, that would not, in their view, lead to a government worth their while being part of. But needed meant that the proposed government would have to rely on Green Party TDs for their majority. If the government could function without them, they would have no leverage and they'd be fools to take responsibility for decisions they have no real power to influence. I have an interview coming up where I put some of those realities of the Green Party intent to a Fianna Fáil politician. It's a longish interview, so I'll keep my own thoughts short enough here. You can judge for yourself how many straight answers are forthcoming in that interview, and whether that would indicate if the Greens are wanted in government or not. But that's a soft, values-based judgment. The question, are they needed, that's straight maths. The Civil War parties did spectacularly badly in the election, by a huge margin, their worst combined result ever. But they still got a lot of votes, more than 43% and 72 seats, not counting the Count Corla. That leaves them eight seats short of a majority of 80 you can see how the 12 Green Party TDs votes would come in handy. But would they really be needed? There were 19 independents elected last February as well. Some of them, like Catherine Connolly from Galway or Thomas Pringle from Donegal, are quite left-wing and unlikely to be well disposed to supporting a Fianna Fáil from the Gael coalition. But most of them have strong ties to one or other of those parties, and some have a long record of supporting them in government. Not counted in the Fianna Fáil from the Goyal 72 are former from the Goyal TDs Peter Fitzpatrick, Michael Lowry and Dennis Nocton. There's also former Fianna Fáil TD Matty McGrath. That brings them to 76. Then there's also former Fianna Fáil councillor Richard O'Donoghue, now a TD, 
and the former Fine Gael is Verona Murphy and Matt Shanahan. That's 79. And that's even before looking to other independents who have a record of supporting the last Fine Gael minority government, Sean Canney and Noel Grealish. There is 81, that's a majority straight away. If any of them went overboard, there's still Marion Harkin, Michael McNamara and the Healy Rays. That gives a total of other TDs likely to be open to supporting a Fianna Fáil from the Gael government of 13. That's one vote more than the Green Party can offer. There are two scenarios here. One is that the big parties could form a government with the independents straight away. That might happen, it might not. Another scenario is that they could take in the Greens and if they ever got too troublesome, remind them that they aren't all that needed and that if they don't like it, the big parties have other options. This would put the Greens in an impossible position. They would have no power to bring down the government and they would be totally reliant on the goodwill of Fianna Fáil and Fianna Gael to implement any Green policies. In other words, just like being in opposition. So, are the big parties minded to implement green policies? Have a listen to the interview. Do you agree? Do you disagree? If you want your point of view heard, dial 076 603 5060 and leave a contribution for the show. The lines are open 24 7 and you can find tips on how to record a good contribution and other ways to contact the podcast at hereshow.ie slash call. On the line, I have Senator Malcolm Byrne. Malcolm Byrne was briefly a Fianna Fáil TD for Wexford until the election, uh, and now he's in the new Senate. And he's been exchanging tweets with Saoirse McHugh of the Green Party. One of the tweets that she wrote was, I don't know who needs to hear this, but green politics can't be right-wing slash neoliberal politics. Green politics has to be rooted in equality and justice, otherwise it's just gardening. And Malcolm, you replied, Sersha, climate change is too big an issue to be left to people who need to decide whether the People's Front of Judea or the Judean People's Front are best placed to deal with it. We need action by all parties now. So, Malcolm, you seem like you're perhaps in what might be called a right-wing party, but you're not taking the far right-wing line of denying climate change or denying the need to do anything about it. You're in favour of action on this. Well, Fianna Fáil is not a right-wing party and never has been uh, in spite of efforts uh, to label it as such. And I think if you talk to most people within the party, uh, we would describe ourselves as either centre or centre-left. There's been a long tradition of uh, investment in public services and most in the party would feel very uncomfortable uh, with some of the neoliberal policies that would be espoused by, by, say, some on the right uh, of uh, of Fine Gael. Um, People wonder what the difference between the two parties is is, uh, I, I would cite housing as often is the example, is that, you know, Fine Gael has a belief uh, that the market will solve all problems. Uh, Fianna Fáil's belief is, yes, we believe in a free market, we believe in business and in competition, but where the market fails, uh, then the state has to intervene, uh, which is, is the case uh, uh, clearly with housing. Oh, okay, you're, uh, you're, you're placing yourself there, and you're clearly placing yourself in the group of people who see that something urgently needs to be done with climate change, and Robin Cafola, who's a guy associated with the Green Party, in that same Twitter exchange, he put in a bunch of questions. And I've actually recorded him asking the questions. And I'll give mm-hmm. you one of them to start with. Uh, so my name is Robin Cafola. I'm a climate activist and Green Party member. And I'm the chairperson of the Green Party's Climate Forum. Uh, and these are a series of questions I have for Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael, uh, who are eager to go into government with us. Should Ireland go faster or slower in reducing our emissions than the rest of the world? If the US or China refuse to reduce emissions, should we cut faster or slower as a result? Very simple there, Malcolm. Uh, Cutting carbon emissions, should we slow down or speed up? Well, the first thing I suppose I should say is that um, regardless of whether or not the Greens do decide to come into government, uh, climate change is going to be a priority. Uh, It it has been a priority for Fianna Fáil in terms of uh, you know, our election manifesto. Hold, hold, up, uh, hold know... up, hold up, hold up on that. In the previous Green Party Fianna Fáil coalition, which collapsed in 2011, from 2007 to 2011, written into the programme for government was a 3% annual reduction in greenhouse gas emissions. Once that they were in government, Fianna Fáil effectively blocked that. Well, sorry, uh, 
there's some idea, you know, the Fianna Fáil effectively blocked that. That that wasn't the case. Remember, our government is a part is a, a combination of a number of parties. It didn't um, happen, though, did it? Uh, no, except it didn't. Did happen, the Green Party block, might, block it? You might. You might recall, though, that uh, you know the global financial crisis that impacted between 2008 and 2010. Uh, there was a very quick shift in terms of focus on uh, on, on some of the issues that are there. Um, look, climate change is, uh, you know, it's a serious issue. It's going to have to be dealt with, with whatever government uh, comes into office. Okay, but answer, uh, answer, and, answer Robin's question well, specifically. I was going, Speed up I was or going to come to it. I go was on. going to come to it. But I, I, I mean, one of the things that I've got to do is to continue to, to challenge the sort of the, the premise from which some of these questions are asked. First of all, the Green Party don't have a monopoly on issues around the environment or climate change. It's the responsibility of every party. Uh, it would be great to see the Green Party in government because it would provide stability and obviously an expertise uh, around uh, environmental issues. But if the Green Party choose not to go into government, and that's their choice. Mm-hmm. And by the way, there's still no certainty that Fianna Fáil will necessarily uh, go into government. But whatever I, I'm, not, I'm government still not is, hearing whether you're hitting the brake or the accelerator. Yeah, I'm coming back, but, but whatever new government is formed are going to have to deal uh, with climate change. Uh, do I mean, is it Fianna Fáil policy that we believe that in terms of our emissions need to be reduced at a faster rate? Yes, that is the answer. Yes, there was agreement in terms of the uh, the all-party committee uh, on uh, climate reform. Um, Timmy Dooley was Fianna Fáil's environment spokesperson at the time, and people acknowledge uh, his work uh, in terms of pushing a lot of that agenda was very strong. Uh, there is no question um, but that that we are committed to be able to do this, and any incoming government is going to have to address doing it. Here's the challenge, though, and and, and this yeah. is the real question. It's right. We commit to, and let's say we go for a seven percent target rather than the three and a half percent target. Mm-hmm. What are the practical measures that we can put in place in order to be able to achieve that? How do we bring people with? We're us? going to come because to that. Like I've, got any... a, I've got a list of questions on that, and I'm I'm, I'm going to come to that in a second. But here's one other, the next question for Robin. I'll get you to listen to this. The IPCC best case gives a 60% chance of remaining below 1.5 degrees of global warming with greenhouse gas reductions of 45% by 2030 and net zero by 2050. Would you bet your house and your children's lives on a 60% chance? Uh, well, well, one, I, uh, I, I wouldn't be as reckless as Robin would suggest in terms of betting people's houses or children's lives uh, on, uh, you know, on, on anything that could happen. I think mm-hmm. the, the, the clear, I mean, the clear message is in terms of we have to achieve uh, uh, reductions um, in global warming uh, and of, in, of uh, in half carbon emissions. In 10 years and um, net zero in 20 years? It's, uh, well, it's, it can, look, I, I'm not going to say that it, it, it will be done. And if Ireland... No, 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 Ireland no, no. I, I, you know, no, nobody knows if it will be done. The question is, do you support what the IPC say is required? That is to uh, say, uh, uh, have it in by 2030 in 10 years yeah. and eliminate it by 2050. Uh, but it, yes, but it, it, you know, it has to be done. Uh, this is, you know, this is the reality. And there, there are probably two elements to this. Um, one, what, what can we do? No, here no, you've, you know, you've answered that and, question. We'll move on. We'll move on uh, to that because well, I have a bunch I, I of questions. No, no, hang on, William. I'm, okay, I'm, go I'm ahead. Gonna, go I'm ahead. Make the point here because, uh, like, you know, what uh, what we've actually got to look about doing is, you know, uh, um, do I believe that this needs to be happened? The answer is yes. But the crucial questions are how we go about uh, how we go about doing that. Mm-hmm. The first thing to kind of say is around Ireland's role in terms of addressing it. So, what can we do domestically? And then the second thing is, uh, how can we use Ireland's position uh, internationally uh, to be able to influence global policy? Because as, as you made the point earlier, um, you know, we, we could achieve everything that we want to achieve. But if the US and China and, uh, and particularly other developed economies uh, don't take action, then in many ways, a lot of our domestic action you know, will, will, have, will have minimal impact. OK, so, uh, so then, there, then, there then two, Malcolm, Malcolm, focus on that point. Hold that. with that thought, hold that uh, with that thought. If it looks like China and US are not moving as fast as we think they should and the yeah. uh, IPCC think they should, would you then say Ireland should just not bother? No, that, that wasn't. We, I mean, so we should is, go is ahead. We, we have, should go ahead. We should minimum. go ahead. Oh, no, we, we have to. Uh, I think we have to do domestically, but I think we have to use our influence at a European level. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think we have to use both the soft and economic power of the European Union uh, to be able to influence uh, what's happening at a global level. 
you know, I, I'm, I'm a great believer in multilateral institutions. Uh, I think uh, that, that, you know, Ireland has always played a strong role in their development. And I think it's even more important in tackling issues like climate change, but also our response to the COVID-19 crisis and how we're going to deal uh, with you know the, the 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 rapid technological changes that we're going to see over the next number of years. Oh, okay. Then, uh, okay. So then, then listen. Listen to one further question from Robin. Then, what percentage of cars will need to be removed, not replaced with electric vehicles, by 2030? How do we move people around our cities and especially rural Ireland without internal combustion vehicles? If we can't, what is the strategy for concentrating people living in rural Ireland? What's the number there? Uh, well. <laughs> First of all, this was you're asking a question on the basis of what's the situation in 2020. Uh, and Robin's question was around, you know, looking to 2030. And yeah. I think then what we need to look at doing, uh, and this is something that in Fianna Fáil we, we've been talking about for a while, is about designing, uh, you know, our cities, our towns and rural communities for the future. Mm -hmm. So let's let's look at, uh, and, and interestingly, I think what's happened um, you know, as a result of, of this COVID-19 crisis is that a lot more people are working remotely. I think you'll see a change in companies and organizations making a decision, you know, rather than having to invest in additional office space, will it make more sense to invest in uh, the technology and training for my staff so that they can work remotely so that they don't have to commute and they don't have to travel. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we have to look about, you know, how we sustain rural towns and villages. And sure, interestingly, but, but, but one Malcolm, of the most... Malcolm, Malcolm, I, I, everybody can look at things. But the real question is here, would you have a target for a number of vehicle reduction by 2030? Well, well, why not look at what way are we going to be transporting people around... Uh, Ireland and the world in 2030. Yeah, but, yeah, um, hold on, hold on, Malcolm. About one, at best, at best, about one percent of houses are built every year. So you get a, you get about one percent turnover in the housing stock every year. So that would be in ten years, if you were lucky, you get about ten percent of the housing stock changed. So clearly, that's not going to move we, much we, we, in ten years. Wait one sec. We we were talking about about you know transport and so on. Uh, my my. Um, my other point, by the way, in terms of sustainability of rural Ireland and so on, is is we need to invest in water and wastewater infrastructure so that our villages uh, are sustainable. That would mean, you know, and rollout of national broadband that 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 people won't have to travel. Mm -hmm. But you know, we're not looking at, and, and I mentioned one of the things of technological change that's going to happen over the next decade. We're going to be looking at, um, you know, automated cars. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to be looking at, but you have uh, to build them, and that takes a whole load of carbon. Uh, well, arguably yes, um, but you know we're also going to be looking at which is, is a lot of people are driving ten-year-old uh, cars now, and a lot of people will be driving ten-year-old cars in ten years' time. Well, that 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 all depends on the shift in terms of policy. I mean, it's it's a little bit like a cent, you know, uh, a century ago, one of the big concerns in cities like New York and London mm -hmm. was the build-up of horse manure. No, no, it's not. That's uh, a myth. That's, big... been, that's been thoroughly debunked. And and that's a really a climate change but denier you're not, you're not, to say. It's, no, hold on, I... hold on for a second. Because this is an important issue, Malcolm. Because the Greens have essentially often put their heads on the chopping block in by saying things. For example, Eamon Ryan said that everybody in a particular village shouldn't have a car. There should be a car sharing scheme in yeah, villages and, in, in and rural Ireland. And Fianna about, Fáil, uh... rural TDs and many of the journalists who support them queued up to make fun of him for that. And yeah, you know, that, that, shows... may be, that may well be rele relevant, but what's and, your alternative? And this is, yeah, but hang on, hang on. Um, but... <laughs> You see, this is one of the, the, the points about that I'm, I, I made in, in both the article I wrote in the Sunday Business Post and elsewhere is that it's important uh, to bring, uh, you know, people with you uh, that there is public buy-in, which I think there is an acceptance around the need to, to address climate change issues, but it's about giving people viable alternatives. Mm -hmm. So um, where are you talking? I mean, when Eamon Ryan said that, you know, that there should only be one car for every 10 people in rural Ireland, the immediate attitude in rural Ireland, well, that's all very well for Eamon Ryan and all the Greens sitting in Dublin 6, um, but clearly they don't understand uh, how rural communities operate. Uh, and the question there is about, you know, how do you provide uh, viable uh, alternatives, which includes things around rural taxi schemes, uh, which includes, and yes, investment in cycling infrastructure, um, but you have to have 
proper planning of rural villages and rural communities. Okay, but uh, I, I, and, uh, taking yeah, all no, of that into account, back, and that's yeah, not controversial, Mark. That's not controversial. I don't want you to talk down the clock because you were asking a very specific question. What percentage of vehicle reduction would you be in favour of or would you accept? Uh, but but you see that that isn't the question. The question is how can you ensure that we have uh, a sustainable transport system mm-hmm. in operation uh, in twenty thirty? Mm-hmm. So there are a couple of things. One, it, it's not it, it's not simply asking right. You know how do we knock all these vehicles off the road? We kind of go. Right, well, why are these vehicles uh, yeah, on no, the there's road? a how to it. Okay, uh, Malcolm, I completely agree. There's a whole range of things to discuss as to how you would achieve that. But if you haven't decided what it is that you're trying to achieve, then those uh, solutions tend to be well, very what, unfocused what and unlikely to, to be successful. To and, if, and Robin is essentially correct to say that you have to have a target of eliminating X number of vehicles in order for all of those initiatives to have a focus to actually get something done? And but, it's but, a really simple question. But, I mean, what what there would are, that target well, be? Well, there, are, there are the targets in terms of the, you know, the report of the all-party uh, all group that, that, that reported on climate change. And there are a number of targets there uh, that are around, uh, around vehicles. But what it's, in, what it's important to do is in terms of the, you know, the headline, and this is the point that I've been making, it's no point in terms of setting headline targets unless you start to have realistic measures in place. Sure, absolutely. Uh, to... You need to do both. But both includes having a target. Will Fianna Fáil have a target? Uh, well, well, well there, there's agreement in terms of the all-party report on climate change with regard to specific numbers and actions that need to be taken. The key on this is, is uh, what, what is that a programme for government. If there is a programme for government that is put in place, it's going to be a range of measures uh, to, to, to be met. So, it's, it's okay, almost like okay. I don't, I don't want to dwell on that. About, I don't want to dwell on that too much because no, but, we have, but, I have but, a bunch of, of questions. Because this is this is the case. You know, it's all very well to throw out and say, right, we're going to take a million vehicles off the road over the next ten years. Yeah. we've got to look at, at, at about doing this. But okay, why are those vehicles being used? One, because we don't have proper public transport. Two, sure, because yeah, we don't yeah, have I, sustainable. I understand, Malcolm. Malcolm, everybody understands that that those difficulties exist, and that's not something that's a dispute. What I'm trying to explore are the points that are in dispute between yourself and perhaps people in the Green Party. And one other question, one other question. Let's there's one not, other question. There's not an issue in dispute. I mean, there's an acceptance that, that we've got to reach this. The real issue in the, the, the nitty-gritty will be in the negotiation of what goes into the programme for government. And this is about where you've got to marry, right, how do we meet our targets on climate change while at the same time in, in, ensuring the sustainability of rural Ireland, the sustainability of... Uh, of our farms. Okay, farms talking about talk, talking about farms and Malcolm, Malcolm, talking about farms and rural Ireland. Listen to this question: How much do we need to reduce the dairy herd by in the next five years and ten years? Simple question. Yeah, very very simple question. And and I would, I mean, my counter would be to to the Greens. Then is uh, how do we ensure if we reduce the dairy herd? Uh, that farmers can have a uh, sustainable living within their community. Sure, and that's, that's two, a very important question, but the, the, two, but that, but that but question can related. only be answered once you've answered the question of how much will you no, reduce the dairy no, herd. No, 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 no. The two, the, two questions are, the two questions are related. Um, I, and I think th- this is, is one of the challenges. It's not that, I mean, the agricultural community are the guardians of the countryside. You mm-hmm. know, they have, uh, they have looked after uh, our rural communities very well over long periods. They could be the best advocates for the reduction in climate change. All farmers are looking for is to ensure that they have a an income by which they can sustain themselves and sustain mm-hmm. their families and can contribute into their rural communities. Okay, then one Malcolm, of the deal with Malcolm, deal with one issue I, that yeah, I'm but, aware I'm aware of canvassers who are not a million miles away um, from you in the election, who were going around rural Ireland saying, don't vote Fine Gael, vote Fianna Fáil, because Fine Gael are likely to go into government with the Greens, and you don't want any of that green nonsense, vote Fianna Fáil, and we'll make sure none of that green nonsense happens. I'm specifically aware of canvassers, Fianna Fáil canvassers, giving that message. Would well, you stand I'm, over I'm, that? I'm, I'm specifically aware of, you know, green canvassers who have, uh, who have effectively said, we have to get rid of the national herd. Um, you know, which is not, you know, which doesn't make sense. Let's talk about... Well, they've said that it has to be reduced significantly. Do you agree? 
No, but but hang on, you're using uh, one anecdote to try to illustrate a point. No, I'm not. That was no, 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 no. That line was given many times, also in public, that effectively targeting rural voters and using the Green Party to scare off people voting for Nile. I, I no, I, I don't think. I mean, being honest, I think it's been you know, Fianna Fáil or Fianna Gael canvassers don't need uh, to use scare lines. I think some of the lines that have come from Green politicians. Uh, have been more likely to scare uh, voters in rural Ireland. And I think the key about this, and this is the point that I've been making, is in order to achieve the kind of climate change uh, measures that we need and the reductions in emissions, Mm -hmm. uh, it is essential to work with the farming community and with rural Ireland. Sure, and having Uh, worked with them, and having worked with them, Malcolm, having worked with them, roughly how much do you think the National Dairy Herd needs to be reduced by in working with them and providing for a new new earning opportunities and so forth? Will there be a target? But but this is the kind of case of, you know, knowing the price of everything and the value of nothing. Here's here's what I want to do. Um, The question that I would be, how I would be phrasing is, right, How can farmers contribute towards us meeting uh, our overall climate change emissions uh, reduction Mm -hmm. while at the same time ensuring uh, the sustainability of our farms and rural Ireland? Mm -hmm. And what that what that requires, um, first of all, uh, is an understanding uh, of uh, rural communities. Um, Farmers are not, I mean, averse uh, to to change. It's all about, you know, making sure that their farms are sustainable in in both means. That's not actually true. Farmers are really quite a conservative community. Uh, And and because uh, you're making that statement and that... uh, And I would even say that's a prejudice that you have. No, it's Um, not. It's it's an observably true. uh, How? Why, why do you say that? Uh, you, do you see many votes for people before profit in, in rural constituencies? Do you see many, <laughs> you, vo- many anybody, votes for, for the well, Green well, Party? Uh, no, no. If the, well, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. The more conservative parties in Ireland do better, and even conservative with a very small C, it is clear that, for example, the more rural the well, constituency, could I, could I the, the, the lower the vote for the Eighth Amendment. Insult, and that, that's not an insult. insult no, I don't think calling them conservative is an insult um, at all. Because because your your implication is is that um, you know farmers can't contribute as much. Uh, as Green Party members cycling around on on, on bicycles. And no, no, it's not. No, no, it's specifically not that. My my question is: Is it possible to? enumerate to say how much and if it's not possible and the reason I think that these questions are very pertinent is because I spoke to someone who was very close to uh, the Green Party and was very annoyed with the negotiating in 2007 where the Green Party negotiated the, a deal with Fianna Fáil to go into government they were the source that I'm talking about was particularly opposed to what the leadership of the Green Party was doing at the time and the reason they they were opposed to that was because they said anything any commitment that doesn't have a deadline and a budget is not a commitment and if you're saying oh yes we look at reducing the number of vehicles and we'll look at reducing the dairy herd but not give any numbers then you can't be trusted surely but what's what's our overall target um our overall target is, if we're talking about a 7% annual reduction in emission. That's halving by there, 2030 and eliminating by are, 2050. Yeah, yeah. there are a number of ways um, that that can be achieved. Uh, and what I'm saying is we look at specific measures to be able to do that. So it's all very well. But, 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 but Malcolm, 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 can, you see, how, can you see how it really feels that people, uh, people like Sarah McHugh really don't believe, and, and uh, Robin Cafola as well, really don't believe you can, you can be trusted because there's a lot of fine talk there and no commitment to any hard numbers. And you said there's a lot of ways to achieve that. I but actually fine, disagree. I actually, it's incredibly we challenging. It's incredibly yeah. challenging. Yeah. And you but would we, need to take a very, very large proportion of the vehicles that are on Irish roads off the roads. You yeah. would need to take out a very large proportion of the dairy herd you'd need to perhaps close down the entire concrete industry and we have a question here on what, how do you build if you don't have concrete you would need to take a big chunk out of air travel you need to do all of those and saying that oh well there's a w- number of different ways to do it actually there isn't all of those ways need to be done don't they 
uh, well, a combination of those need to, 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 to take place. Yeah, and Michael O'Leary will come, off and come yeah. up and say, well, Ryanair doesn't have to reduce carbon at all if everybody else cuts it to zero. And yeah. then the IFA will come on and say, well, the farmers don't need to change at all if R- Ryanair and the concrete industry cut it to zero. But here, and the reality is you have to stand up to some of those people. And those interests are typically very closely aligned with Fianna Fáil and Fianna Gael, you know, And it's you know very difficult I, I, to see what's going to happen here. But, but this is where we're differing, William, because it's very clear that, that you believe that there has to be confrontation. No, no, I don't. I believe made, there has to be a decision. Well, there's the example, because you you know, you're, 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 you're interrupting when I'm about to make the point. Go ahead. Um, uh, this, this sh- look, there will, there, will, there, will, there will be difficulties. You know, no major decision is ever reached uh, without uh, overcoming difficulties. Mm-hmm. Um, but but here, is, here is the crucial uh, issue. If we're going to set these these targets, the only way targets can be met is by bringing people along with them. Mm-hmm. So, okay. so, so if we are going to talk about um, you know reducing carbon emissions from agriculture, what we need to do is yes, set the overall targets, but turn to those who are in farming and other areas to say, right, how can you uh, get us uh, to this point? And for farmers, what they would say is, look, and it's it's. It's really what, what farmers are interested in is, is you know, a sustainable income. So let's look at, uh, for instance, the planting of forestry and the investment in carbon sinks and so mm-hmm. on. There is no real financial incentive uh, for farmers uh, to shift land into forestry and carbon sinks. There's Malcolm, an element I, Malcolm, I, I agree will, with you on that. I, I, I wanna, but I want to come to this point because okay. you can't simply say to farmers, right, uh, you have to lose three quarters of the cattle uh, we'll achieve our targets. Tick, tick, tick. Right, we've ticked a box. Yeah. And the result of that is the result of that is is that the farmer is left uh, without an income that 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 he or she can support their family. Yeah, well, I agree. I agree with that. Right? I, yeah, Malcolm, yeah, but, Malcolm but, I agree with what you're saying. But at the end of the day, with definitely most of those industries that I've mentioned, and probably all of those industries that I've mentioned, at the end of the day, you're going to have to say actually we will have to achieve those targets. We will have to have numerical targets and they will have to be achieved. You're 100% correct to say people have to be brought along, that people have to be given justice in terms of not just being left high and dry without an income. Those are all 100% correct. But can you see where people like Robin Cafola and Saoirse McHugh are very, very nervous because Fianna Fáil does really have a history of pandering to interest groups. No, no, and no, you no. say, hold, hold on <laughs> for a second. And you mentioned when you, you started out and you re- objected to me saying that Fianna Fáil was a conservative party. And you said that you're a centre to centre left party. And I can understand why Fianna Fáil says that. And in many respects, it's true. But for example, Ireland has perhaps the worst protection for tenants in the world and has appallingly high uh, prices. Uh, Ireland no, has, sh- uh, Ireland, hold, no, no, hold on, for, hold on for one second. Hold on for one second. Hold on for one second. Ireland has the lowest population density and the highest land prices. And those two things normally don't go together in the EU because of the way that Fianna Fáil has protected landowners historically. And though you're correct that Fianna Fáil has many centre-left aspects to it, in that particular case, particularly protecting landowners, Fianna Fáil has never displayed centre-left values. And well, what's well, happening sorry. here... Oh, hold on for a second. Right back, no, what's no, no, happening, no, 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 what's I'm happening gonna, here is... I'm not going to let you just go on a, on a, a kind of a run. On that. Answer if you go that. right back to the 1930s, um, you know, when we, we saw the slum clearance programmes, which were overseen by De Valera, which went right through, and uh, uh, you know, up until the 2000s, the record mm-hmm. of Fianna Fáil has been about, about home building. And ultimately, um, you know, in, in all the crisis and, you know, the housing crisis that we currently face, the main challenge has always been around supply and we need to address the supply question. Mm-hmm. Now, there are a couple of... There are a couple w- of without reducing land prices. Into, and well, well, one of the things that, that, that's specifically on the table um, that Fianna Fáil brought to the table was implementing some of the recommendations uh, around the Kenny report, which would le- uh, lead to an end when, when, uh, in when, speculation when was, and when was, when was, when, was the other, Kenny, when was the Kenny report published? What year? The Kenny, the Kenny report was published in the 1970s. How many years have Fianna uh, Fáil been in government since then? 
it, it, oh no, I, I accept Fianna Fáil being government, but, but by the way, Fianna, there, there has not been an issue. If you look at the question of affordability of housing, uh, it's, you know, it, it wasn't until recent times that suddenly you started to see, and it was a lot to do with supply, that, that, that you know, housing wasn't available. So here's, here's the question, right? Um, uh, how do we balance, if we are going to achieve, how do we balance that huge demand that we have for housing in Ireland uh, which we do need to address, uh-huh. while at the same time uh, looking at uh, managing uh, our uh, our carbon emissions. Yeah, uh, I think the other the other, by the way, and I mentioned, you know, there are three, you know, the three challenges. The other big thing which we haven't looked at is around how we can use new technology uh, to be able um, to change what we're doing in in, in more effective ways. There's no technology on the horizon. Malcolm, Malcolm, would you agree there's no technology on the horizon that will change manufacturing concrete from being a very, very high emitter? We're moving toward the, William, we're moving toward the 3D printing of homes. Um, We already have kind of self-made homes. There's a company in Cavan uh, that delivers effectively self-made homes. There are more environmentally friendly ways being discovered of producing concrete. Um, you know, the, the assumption that we will always work off the same technology, the assumption that vehicles are always going to be fueled um, by fossil fuels. Well, they have to be uh, built. Uh, yeah, but, but that's, and that's also... Uh, half of the carbon emissions from any vehicle is based on the manufacture, not on the use. Yeah, I, I accept that and I, I realise the point. But, you know, what, what we've got to look at doing, we're still going to need to transport people. Sure. So here, you know, the questions are, that we're going to look at is, right, what are the most environmentally friendly ways, first of all, to produce uh, those vehicles in whatever form they are uh, to, uh, to transport people? And then secondly, you know, what are the most environmentally friendly uh, and effective ways of doing it? And I think... Uh, the, the difference has to be, uh, oh, 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 okay. and this is I, I the difference where I understand we're, that we're question. coming from. Malcolm, I want to, I want to, want to just move on to one but, other But you've question. already avoided the question of, 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 of farming. because I'm asking you, the questions, I'm not avoiding the questions. And sort of saying, do we simply tick the box and say, right, agriculture, you have reduced carbon emissions. Tick, that's fine, we've reduced it. In the same time, we've, no, you know, nobody, we Malcolm. No, hang on a second. Ireland hang on a second. This is a straw man, Mark and Malcolm. Malcolm, this is a straw man argument. Nobody in the no, Green Party, or, nobody in the argument. Green Party it's... or anywhere else, has advocated reducing carbon emissions in that way. I'm not aware of anybody who's disputed that there's a huge amount of organization and taking care of the people who are currently in those industries. That's not a point in dispute. What is... But there's no discussion around it. It's all just about this. That's, you that's know, absolutely not you, true. Do you agree we have to reduce the national herd? Tick. The, dis- the question is not... That if you, because, yeah, yeah that's, that is the way, question. That is a question but the that debate, needs to be answered. The debate, we have, the debate we have in Fianna Fáil is... In order to achieve emissions reductions and have agriculture to play its part, uh, how can we bring farmers along so that they can continue to have a sustainable income? And that's a very different question to simply saying, do you reduce the... Sure, uh, uh, absolutely, that's a different question. But it's, it's, also, it's also very different to what Fianna Fáil people were telling farmers during the election, which was, no, you're, vote, you're... vote Fianna Fáil and you won't have to deal with any of this Green Party nonsense. But one other question, I want to put you one, la- one other question um, from Robin. What does the need to reduce energy mean for the construction of data centres and new office buildings? Well, look, uh, again, this, this comes into the, you know... Um, I, I, I would phrase, following on from my last one, I'd phrase it, I'd phrase it very differently, which is um, technology companies uh, provide enormous employment in Ireland. Data, data centres, centres are don't. huge. Uh, no, data centres have tiny, tiny workforces. Uh, 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 but it's the support that data centres provide to a lot of the, te- the technology companies. Yeah, so, but they're, so they're not, that's, that's not aimed at Ireland. Uh, but but it's it's part of sustaining. I mean, one of the big changes I keep mentioning around technology is going to be about the growth of big data. Mm-hmm. So the context in which I would be looking at you know a question like that is right. Um, we're going to be using big data in an interesting way, and by the way, big data will make a huge difference in terms of how we uh, measure uh, you know in, in improving our climate mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and also in terms of of, of you know when we talked about earlier in terms of transport, how we can most effectively transport people. Uh, so we're going to need data centers. Uh, mm-hmm. So how do we ensure that they are most, you know, in, in, in environmentally friendly and so on? I, I, I don't accept the premise that, okay, tick, let's close down all the, d- the data centers. What we've got to look about doing is one, uh, 
because this country is, is rich in terms of technology companies, both in FDI, but also in terms of startups and scale-ups. So how can we ensure that, that you know, there's a green deal for those companies? Uh, how can we then also use that the technology that they're developing will help us uh, in the reduction uh, of our carbon emissions? Uh, and, you know, this, this, is, this has to be part of the discussion around how we go about achieving uh, you know, uh, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the carbon reduction uh, that, that, that we need. Um, it's something that everyone's in favour of. No one is going to say that it's going to be, uh, it's going to be easy. Um, but it's really about talking to all of the sectors who are involved and sort of saying, look, we're going to do this. Um, here's what we need to look at achieving. How can we achieve it while at the same time, uh, you know, providing people with employment opportunities, ensuring the sustainability uh, of their farms and businesses? Well, pause that then. And I want to shift from that to a different question. And it's just really your, obviously, you've been involved in politics a long time and uh, nationally, and I'm sure you observe the international political stage. Given all that you know about that, given who we have in power in the United States, given who we Mm -hmm. have in power in other countries, The IPCC have said we need a 45% reduction in emissions in the next 10 years to avoid 1.5%. And that seems to me very difficult to achieve politically. And if we're over Mm -hmm. two degrees warming, which is something that really seems quite likely given the track that we're on, that will be very major disruption for the lifestyles of a great number of people. Yeah. What do you think internationally will be achieved? Well, I made the point earlier around uh, the importance of multilateral uh, organizations and institutions. Uh Uh, And I think in a global um, context where we're moving towards a G2 dominated by the US and China, I think it's essential uh, at a global level that organizations such as the European Union uh, play a strong role uh, and that we use our economic and soft power uh, to be able uh, to influence decision making. Uh-huh. But, but at the uh, end I of the day, of the, what's, your, what's your best guess well, well, as, as a uh, politician? What and, will and, happen? By, by the way, I want, I want to point out because you know you started tackling um, Fianna Fáil and her history. Uh, the Green Party's lack of support for multilateral organisations like the European Union in the past is one that I think didn't exactly contribute uh, towards. Um, you know, or countries cooperating to to address some of these challenges. I'll, I'll tackle the Green Party on that when I speak to them. But but you just you know pull out your Mystic Meg uh, hat and what do you think is going to happen? Clearly, you're not accountable for what happens around the world. But just what do you uh, think will happen? Yeah, uh, the worry I have is about the rise of uh, a lot of authoritarian regimes that that frankly don't have great regard for the environment. Um, you know, we're certainly looking at Russia, at China. Um, to an extent at the United States, but Brazil, the Philippines, and so on. And uh-huh. until we challenge that populism um, in, in Europe and around the world, is going to be a problem. I think China, which has kind of engaged in economic colonialism in the developing world, mm-hmm. uh, needs to be challenged a lot more uh, and held to account. And I was making the point earlier, but I think that that's partially why it's essential that Ireland plays a very strong role in international organizations uh, in in doing that, um, C- commit yourself. I, I, commit yourself. What do you think is going to happen uh, globally? Well, look, uh, I think if if there is a change in the presidency in the United States, uh, if Joe Biden is elected as president, I think that uh, climate change will move up uh, the, uh, the 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 domestic agenda in the US. Uh, it's 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 obviously going to be a, a, a challenge there. If Donald Trump is reelected, I certainly don't expect it. Uh, to be the case. Um, I think, you know, China is going to be interesting to watch and see um, the approach of the the Chinese Communist Party, Mm -hmm. uh, whether it will, um, uh, you know, it will realize, particularly as a result of this COVID-19 crisis, that, that, you know, it may need to change uh, some of its approaches. Mm -hmm. Um, It's... uh, it's it's hard to say. Uh, I mean, it, if if now more than ever, it's it's a time where we you know we require strong global leaders. Um, I think we're lucky in Europe, um, you know, that we've had the likes of Angela Merkel, that we have Macron, who you know very much understand the need of climate change, and that Europe can be the shining light uh, on this issue. But 
part of our challenge is going to be around, you know, dealing with, with countries around the world. Part of it is also around, you know, questions around uh, climate justice. And about I, I'm the not hearing the a prediction. World. Um, I, by, my, by my nature, I'm an optimist, uh, and I think we have to be. Um, but it's always tempered with, with realism. Uh, and unfortunately, um, with the rise of populism, which we've seen internationally and sadly at home, um, you know, I, I, I can't give any, uh, I, I'm, I'm not going to give any guarantees. I, I would be concerned uh, that we are going to see. Um, okay, on, on, the, on, that basis, on that basis, I'll play this one last uh, question from Robin. Given that it is increasingly unlikely that we will prevent global warming of less than two degrees centigrade, where should we move the populations of Dublin, Cork and Galway to? When should we begin moving them? Uh, well, those of us who've been arguing around the sustainability of rural Ireland have sort of been saying that uh, this is something um, we've got to uh, we've got to be prepared for for a long time. So, uh, in sustaining rural Ireland, um, you know, the towns and villages, we've got to make sure that there's water and storage schemes so that people can build housing, that there's the broadband infrastructure and so on that's in place. We are going to look at needing uh, to invest more in uh, in flood defences. Um, and part of what I think we've got to do is even if we, and I mentioned this point about planning our cities and our towns and rural communities of the future, is taking into account the potential of climate change, um, but also the point I made around uh, technological change. Um, mm -hmm. How can we use new technologies and the convergence of new technologies uh, to, uh, to transform how we live for the better? Senator Malcolm Byrne, former Fianna Fáil TD for Wexford, now a member of the new Senate. Thank you very much for talking to me. Great. Thank you. Here's How is Ireland's political, social and current affairs podcast. Make your view heard. Record a contribution to be included in the next show. Just dial 076 603 5060 and tell the world what you're thinking. Your voicemail may be included in the next podcast. You can find tips on recording your contribution and other ways to contact the show at hereshow.ie slash call. Go to the website for sources and references from the show. And while you're there, please like the show on Facebook, follow the show on Twitter at Here's How Podcast, and follow Robin Cafola at Robin Cafola and Malcolm Byrne at Malcolm Byrne. And get in touch with me if you can suggest a guest or a topic for a future show. And thanks again to Peter and all of the other patrons on Patreon. Their donations allow me to devote time to research and finding interesting guests. And if you could do the same as them and donate a dollar or two per podcast or per month, go to patreon.com slash here's how. That link is on the website. Also there you can find out how to subscribe to the podcast for free on your computer, on your phone or by email. All that information is at www.hereshow.ie. The Here's How podcast is produced and presented by me, William Campbell. Thank you for listening. Thank you.